Okay, welcome to this video. And this video is titled Zero Pair Integers, and we're going to discuss exactly what a zero pair is and how we can utilize that uh, when we're working with operations uh, with integers. Okay, so if you remember a few videos back, we had a football example where we were talking about pass passing plays and uh, for example we had a short pass play where we made three yards and then the next very next play we were sacked and lost three yards and how we talked about how we were right back where we started well that is an application of using uh, zero pairs for example and uh, let's uh, we're going to use something uh, visual to work with and uh, basically we need to establish what that is first let's say we had the <clears throat> we'll just use an addition with two positive integers as as a quick example let's say we had the uh, problem two plus three okay which you know what that is already you know that that's five well we can represent that <clears throat> visually with uh, a green circle can be a positive integer and then later we'll use a red circle as a negative integer so let's model this that way so by modeling it we can do one two two green circles for the, the positive two then we'll do plus a positive three which is one two three and you can see just like we thought that equals five right one two three four five okay <clears throat> all right so now that we have that established let's take a look at establishing what a zero pair really is okay so we've already said that we can represent a positive one a single positive integer positive one as a green circle and a negative one let me let me write that beside it. This is a positive one. <clears throat> and then we can represent a negative one with a red circle. Negative one. And you'll see why we do this here in just a second. Okay? And this right here is the by definition a zero pair. I'm gonna circle the zero pair. This is a single zero pair. It's called a zero pair because just like you see here, and we've actually done an example like this before, uh, with the positive one we start at zero and we go po one in the positive direction which is to the right and then that is combined here with a negative one so we are already at positive one and then we're going one in the negative direction so we're going back to zero. We're right where we started. We started at zero, we went out to one, then we went from one back to zero. Okay. We can also do it this way. The, the order really doesn't matter. We could have had our negative one first, or above, and our positive below. This is perfectly okay. This is still a zero pair. So let's model that. In this case, let me erase that. <clears throat> okay. In this case, we are going, starting at zero, going in the negative direction one time first. Then from there, from negative one, we are going po in the positive direction one and back at zero. So the order doesn't matter. Either way, this is a zero pair. Okay. Okay, now let's use another example. Let's say we we're playing a game, let's say like Will of Fortune, where uh, so we're playing a game, and on our our Will of Fortune wheel is got just small numbers on it. But let's say in the first example, our first spin, first spin, we had a a spin where we lost. We lost three dollars. This is a little bit different than Wheel of Fortune, but you get the idea. We lost, I think I said four dollars, right? We lost four dollars. Then on the second spin, we made or gained six dollars. OK, 
Okay, so we gained six dollars. Gained six dollars. Okay, so and we were trying to find out what is our total now. What is our total? All right. Well, let's model this with integers. First, let's attach an integer to each spin. Okay, we lost four. How do we model that? Well, that is a negative number, right? So negative four. And then on the second spin, we had a gain of six. How do we model that? We model that with a positive, and since it was six, positive six. <clears throat> All right, so let's find out what our total was. Okay, so let's rewrite this together okay we have a negative 4 combined with a positive 6 and we're trying to decide what that equals what's the total so that is the question okay and pretty soon you'll be able to do something like this in your head but we're going to work with zero pairs and I, I caution you with doing anything in your head because that offers the opportunity to make mistakes but as you move forward you'll be able to do this very quickly is my point okay let's use our zero pairs to model this as we discuss we'll start with the negative four since it's first we could start with the positive six it doesn't matter but we'll start with the negative four we model that with red circles how many four right four red circles one two three four <clears throat> Okay, then let's model our positive six with our circles. And those are green circles. How many? Six, right? So we'll stack them. So we've got the negatives in one row and the positives in another row. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now let's apply our zero pairs. In this case, these zero pairs. Um, are opposites of one another. The negative one is opposite of the positive one and therefore we can mark these out basically. We'll circle them and then mark them out because they again each let me just circle them first. One, two, three, four zero pairs, right? One, two, three, four. And remember each time we have this zero pair all we're doing is going from negative one I'm sorry, zero out to negative one, since the negative is first, and then from negative one back one in the positive direction, which takes us right back to zero, right? That's what a zero pair is. <clears throat> and why the zero pairs are nice to work with is that we can now, I'm going to just mark these out, okay? And all we're left with, what are we left with? We're left with two. And what color are they? They are green, so therefore they are positive. So there is our answer. That simple. We are left with a positive 2. So our answer is positive 2, or we can just write 2 because the positive sign is implied. All right. Now let's work this on our number line. Let's use our number line. All right, so we're starting at 0, as always, right here. And we go 4 in the negative direction first. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That takes us to negative 4. Okay, then we go 6 in the positive direction. So let's do that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we started here, we go 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That takes us out to a positive 2. Mark that. And there's our answer. Okay. Positive 2 is our answer, right? So with the zero pair method, with the number line method, we got the correct answer. And that is a uh, an example of using both zero pairs and the number line to attack a specific problem. Hopefully that is making sense to you and we will be using that more as we go forward in future videos. So that was just an introduction to zero pair integers. Talk to you soon.